Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to enjoy the following two hours of live wrestling entertainment. Tonight, we will start the night with a fight between Punk Hercules and Yusuf Ahmed. Later on, the team from the Land of the Rising Sun faces off against the Garcia sisters once more. Right after that, Tiger Taylor picks another fight with Sarah Bailey. And the main event of tonight, Puzer Pedro vs. Henry Louis Marceau. Coming to you live from Helsinki, Finland, I am your host Kupari Parta, and this is Brawl Masters. Oh boy, it's gonna be a great start to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I wish all of you, you a very good start of your night, and hope these are gonna be one excellent fight. Is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Athens, Greece, weighing in at 230 pounds, the Urban Gladiator, Anthony Punk Hercules. I'm I'm really pumped up for tonight as well as the upcoming show the last show tonight before the elimination chamber pay-per-view event we are only two nights away from the pay-per-view event of the February and I can tell uh, just as much as I'm excited for that all the brawlers are definitely looking forward to that but let's get through the show tonight first first we have Punk Hercules the Greek brawler and going up against him is uh, obviously gonna be Yusuf Ahmed, the Turkish giant. From Istanbul, Turkey, weighing in at 495 pounds, Yosef Ahmed. You consider that the hire between the Turks and the Greeks would even measure out to the Pro Masters, but actually these two have been so far having a full, full of respectful display to one another, they, they acknowledge one another as four few opponents and actually are having a good time uh, talking in the backstage. I, I really hope to see mo more of this kind of sportsmanship behavior from the two as well as the entire roster. Let's see how things are going to be developing once the bell rings and there we go. The first fight has begun and starting off the fight tonight we have Punk Hercules versus Yusuf Ahmed. It's a Greek versus the Turk. Oh, Turkish, I suppose, would be the fair. Let's see now. Pick, picking up and going for a punch. We, we have very, very interesting. Uh, Yusuf definitely has the size advantage here uh, fighting in this matchup, but let's not uh, call out Punk Hercules. Like, Punk Hercules definitely has. The talent to match up to this. I'm already locked up in a Boston crap hold. Yusuf Ahmed keep, keeping hold of the. Oh, but Punk Hercules just flipping him off. Nice, nice and simple. Turn, turns around and a hair pull match slam. And looking up the arm, twisting it, nasty twist there. Punk Hercules trying to take control, going for stiff punches. Turning around and lift up. Beautiful flip there, beautiful escape. Very, very beautiful escape from there. Turn over the top rope and go for a punch. And Punk Hercules trying to drape him across the middle rope, goes for the neck breaker, dropping Yusuf down to the ringside. The referee trying to get, keep Hercules away, trying to ensure that he does not get outside himself. We're getting a one count already, but Yusuf already back inside the ring. Yeah, it's gonna... It's a battle between a, a heavy, very heavy striker and a very disrespecting striker, as we can see. Just using the top rope to scrape on the eyes. And then the uh, massive, massive amount of power, the raw muscle power that this, his competitor has tonight. Yusuf Ahmed definitely 
uh, I would honestly say one of the strongest man, if not the strongest man in the entire roster so far. I mean, he, he's the one who made Carl Leal look like a, a tiger, tiger, paper tiger during his debut match. That was absolutely, and look at this. Well, not necessarily. Punk Hercules just lifted over 500 pounds of human right on top of him in a military press. Solder up though, Solder is still up. Yusuf Ahmed holding on uh, even after getting twice hit with, with the fastball punch. Going for a sharp elbow to, straight to the chest. A big fancy there, just a just a devastating this is elbow. Yusuf trying to turn things around and turn Punk Hercules around. Oh no, locked up from behind. We have a choke slam smashing straight to the canvas there. Hooking up and shoulders down. Kicks out after a two count. This, uh, this is uh, this is uh, getting into the crutch time. This is this is the time where a winner is decided. Both of them have given uh, their respective heavy shots, and now it all comes down to finishing the job. Of course, there's a good amount of momentum that needs to be pulled on either side. But so far, so far, Punk Hercules in clear, complete control of the fight. Going for the cover, hooking up the leg, and wait a minute, using the middle rope as a leverage, the referee not seeing it. No, Yusuf able to toss him off. Escape, barely escaping the three count there, but Punk Hercules just full on, blatantly cheating in the matchup, like come on. I mean, this is just classic Punk Hercules, he's lining up, preparing for a big move, a shoulder thrust, going for another look at this, atomic drop. A big lift up there into a power slam. Building up the momentum has been successful. Let's see if it's gonna deliver one more time with the pitch. And here it comes, the fastball punch. The Turkish giant is down. The Greek athlete will do it. We have one, we have two, and we have a three count. Punk Hercules gets the pinfall. That was definitely a good, a good start to the show tonight. Let's take a quick look at the replays here. A heavy top, I have a big boot, very, very beautiful. Big boot, there it is. Yeah, Bug Hercules just full on had the control of the uh, fight tonight. I, I don't know whether or not Yusuf was prepared for this or not, but he definitely didn't seem to be in the uh, A shape condition he he's usually is. The man is usually uncontested. But tonight, uh, Hercules was just, just spinning around him in full control. Once again, just Van Kerkelis going, going full on with his disrespectful attitude. The Urban Gladiator, Anthony Punk Hercules. This will definitely be dictating the pacing of the upcoming matches tonight. Stay tuned for more exciting fights. Coming up next, we have a one-on-one -on -one fight between the junior fighters Nikita Ray and Sophia Allen. And here comes the preacher of the Rayway. Discipline, so in control and wait a minute. From behind, we have Aunt Teresa all of a sudden taking part. And he's coming from behind with a shoulder thrust, and a fight has already broken out on the ramp here. There's no, no control to this. Aunt Teresa with, with, with just a blatant disrespect and breaking of the rules here. Once again, just showing no respect to Nikita with a fisherman suplex dropping her down. Right onto the, not even on the gym mat, but right on the concrete floor. With her strike and lifting up now. Reversal with a sit up power bomb, giving Teresa a taste of her own medicine here. 
the referee already gesturing at the two of them to get to get into the ring or otherwise this fight is gonna get called off I mean I suppose this fight has already been called off considering Sofia is nowhere to be found and apparently old Teresa taking part in this one instead counter by Nikita and setting up for another power bomb sit out power bomb just heavy strike on, on the back they are no no matter doesn't look like the surprise attack went on accordingly how Teresa had it in mind, but she might be able to get, get a match out of this one. Both brawlers in the ring. And let's see, the bell hasn't rung, so I suppose the referee is not about to make this official. These two are just going to have to fight it out until eventually one of them will be giving up. We have a lo armbar locked in. Nikita Ray in full control so far, but on Teresa able to escape from there. With a strike and now catch him from behind with a nasty double knee backstabber. That's gonna be breaking breaking up a back and not no not not so much. Definitely gonna be setting up the tool for the elimination chamber. As he to our schedule to go head to head next Saturday. We have a another shoulder lo shoulder locked in, trying to pull it across. And now Going for punches. It's a good thing for honestly. It's a good thing for both of them considering this is an officially sanctioned match. They can go for whatever lengths they want to try and disable the author for the upcoming pay-per-view event, and that's that's just being smart. I gotta say, a, a really smart strategy on the part of Aunt Teresa, whether or not that will be paying off. She needs to ensure that she's able to inflict good enough damage here to make sure that she's, she'll be able to get the victory next Saturday in their next matchup but this might be the end a float over neck breaker by Nikita Ray just full on showing we have a close line now by Teresa and the referee finally coming in to break it off forcing forcing the separation and no the referee gets pushed aside but looks like these two are done done for now well things are definitely gonna get exciting for their upcoming match coming up this Saturday in the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view event. But we have to move on with the show, so let's get these two out of here and move on to the next match, I suppose. Moving on to the third match of the night, we have Big Ham versus Wolf Anderson. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, moving on from that show interrupts that we had previously, we actually do have proper fights coming up. Properly scheduled fights with no interruptions, as he is definitely one of the brawlers who respect that kind of a rule of showing up when they need to. It's a poster child of the Brawl Masters, and one of the greatest brawlers overall. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the The man is big, the man is chunky, but that doesn't, that doesn't make him any less of a brawler. In fact, he has found a perfectly great way to utilize his greater weight, his greater mass in the, inside the ring and take full on advantage of that. That's exactly the type of attitude you need to have it, to make, make it here in the Pro Masters. You take what you have and you use it in whatever way you can imagine. In that sense, you would say that Big Ham is an absolute genius. And that kind of ingenuity has definitely gained him a good amount of support, as well as a great amount of history, uh, winning matches after matches. Rising from the Valhalla. Here comes two brawlers. Ready to bring in the Viking Fury. And his opponent accompanied by Burr, the White Rage. 
representing the Viking Raiders from Valhalla, weighing in at 177 pounds, Wolf Anderson. But Wolf definitely lacks in mass compared to his opponent tonight. He makes in speed, he makes up in speed and agility, and just overall ferociousness. He, he's a very quick opponent to catch, and if, if you let loose of him, if you do not are unable to catch him, he will be all over you. Just fast, fast attacks coming left and right. Alright, the bell has rung and the first match is officially on the way. We have Big Ham Hammond Nelson fighting out against Wolf Anderson tonight. And uh, these two uh, men, professional martial artists, are definitely gonna be taking it to the max. Both of them are season one classic characters, so they have a full awareness of one another's tropes as well as their moves and techniques. Of course, Big Ham having, having only recently given his arsenal a bit of an upgrade, having been trading more and more ever since losing his position in the All-Star uh, Division. But whether or not uh, that's enough to uh, take down Wolf, that, that's a completely utter thing. Big Ham definitely needs to rely on his uh, greater body strength and greater mass and try to use that to uh, shore up his defenses against Wolf. This, this fight is not going to be won with pure on assault uh, by by either of the parties, uh, really. Wolf has to be clear, uh, sure to dodge out of the way whenever Big Ham is going to be going for an attack and go, uh, rely on his speed and agility to get him out of the pickle. Right to the mouth there by Big Ham, but get once again caught by Wolf. Sent over the top rope with a neck breaker, slings on it outside of the ring. A heavy fall and looks like fall is gonna continue on with the assault on the ring side now. Lifting up and beautiful, very beautiful fall away slam there. Look, going for a, looks like a power bomb. No, sunset flip, look at this. Able to use the leverage there to go for a sunset flip power bomb. This is exactly what Wolf needs to be doing. T take the advantage that Big Ham has and use it against him. Locked up and leg sweep into a leg breaker. We're getting into a, up to a five count so far. Sending Big Ham straight to the steel steps. Or apron matter. I didn't hear a clunk. I was usually here. Sent up against the barricade now. And Wolf has full control of the fight so far. And look at this raw strength. Just lifting right onto the barricade and uh, stomp right onto the face. And I already thought it was going to be a 7, but no, apparently the referee started to count again. I don't know how he did that or why he did that. We're, we're up to a 5 count again. Both tossing Big Ham around as he has completely lost the control of this fight. We have a 7 count. Wolf getting back inside the ring, but I'm plenty sure he's going to try and go for another attack. No, he's actually going to be choosing to step, keep it inside the ring this time around. That could be a devastating mistake as Big Ham already setting him up into the corner. Close line, not done yet. Pushed another close line from the corner. Lifted up and goes for the sidewalk slam. Big Ham, full, having built up a good amount of momentum with that comeback, he definitely could go for a big move here and he is planning to do exactly that. Trips the legs across the shoulders into an inverted Alabama slam hooks up the leg and here going for the victory we have two count Wolf kicks out at two yeah I didn't I, I didn't think Ham would be getting a victory from that he's been falling behind for the entirety of the match but this could do it over 400 pounds of mass to strap right on top Wolf able to push him off as Big Ham was trying to keep the pinfall going looks like Wolf trying to get a comeback of his own coming here a sling blade dropping down big ham lifting up and now just curb stomping locking up both of the wrists Wolf on the middle rope now and here comes a knee drop straight to the face hooks up the leg and going for the victory here we have a one we have two no not even a two count big ham kicking out he has definitely and has to recover a bit of his strength there 
But Wolf now with a sudden spear. All of a sudden dropping down big ham. Hooks up the leg and going for the cover again. We have two, we have no, two and a half. Wolf for sure I believe that was it. Or maybe it's desperation falling in. Dotting out of the way, Big Ham avoids the uh, uh, cycle, the lariat. And locks up one more time with the Alabama slam. Devastating, very devastating. And that must, must be lights out for Wall. No, he kicks out. Unbelievable, absolutely. Big Ham still, but he's in a good position. He just needs to drop down the weight one more time. And here it comes. We have one, we have two, and we have three. Big Ham gets the victory. Very, very beautiful and, and a long time coming. Big Ham finally starting to make a comeback for his own end, ending the, his gold streak against Wolf Anderson here. Got the replays and look at this. Wolf really that, did try his best, but unfortunately it was not, not enough to turn, turn off this beautiful, beautiful man. We have the cover again after the Alabama Here's slam. Nothing fancy tonight, just simple, clear tactics that are known to work. The Alabama slam and the gun side drop. This is exactly more big than we need to see. Coming up on the fourth match, we have some tag team action. The team from the land of Rising Sun, Gatiori Elizabeth and No Princess Yuri, are set to go against the Garcia sisters once again. The Princess of the Snow is here, and they're about it, ready to freeze up the competition. Definitely a interesting fight, but once again, Snow Princess Yuri is teaming up with the masked samurai Katsuyori Elizabeth. The team from the land, rise of, land of the Rising Sun is definitely try, trying to establish themselves and going up against the Season 2 Tag Team Champions, the Garcia Sisters. It's definitely giving them the talents they need. Well, I would say a challenge, but then again, we have Snow Princess Yuri and Katsuyori Elizabeth two very accomplished athletes it, it making up this team so it's not gonna be a much much of a challenge to them considering their track record speaking of the masked samurai here she comes and her partner from the land of the rising sun the samurai katsuyori Katsuyori Elizabeth, of course, the pre one of the previous and uh, one of the greatest professional martial arts champions we've had in the Pro Masters, they holding the title for a, a time of entire eight weeks. Of course, during that time, can, can you say that she's the greatest after all? She didn't accept any matches uh, during that time, so can really ca call her a great champion? Not necessarily, but it's all about the time and the prestige. She has definitely made herself known as one of the longest standing professional martial arts champions. Garcia sisters, Isabella and Gloria, season two tag team champions as well as complete, two completely ruthless women, here to make a soul their very own, enjoy the time in the spotlight and ensure that the spotlight stays right in front of them, they'll do whatever they can to ensure that the victory tonight goes for them.
Alright, here we go. The bell has rung and we start off the stack team fight, or the first stack team fight of the night. We have the team made by Snow Princess Yuri and Katsuri Elizabeth and up against them are the Garcia sisters tonight. Yuri and Isabella starting out in the ring and Yuri being already dropped down with a double axe handle. We're wasting no time with that tag. Gloria Garcia has been tagged in uh, full of vigor and full of full re full on ready. Try, try and get a comeback victory going against Yuri and Elizabeth, the two previously having defeated the Garcia sisters. And already locking up the head. Here we have the Cobra Clutch has been locked in by Snow Princess Yuri, trying to get a submission hold. Going, but elbows straight to the face, for, forced the separation there. Gloria able to really expertly figure out a way, re real quick out of that hold. Going now for a slingshot action, going for one elbow, going for two elbows, dropping Yuri down on her back. She's planning, no, she's, yeah, she is, she's gonna be tagging in Isabella again. The two Garcia sisters definitely showcasing a better sense of teamwork this time around, tagging in the other as soon as the uh, one has exhausted their, well, their initial attack, making sure that both of them are able to stay in this matchup for as long time as needed. Yuri takes the opportunity to tag in Elizabeth now. The mask, mask Samurai is now up against, up against Isabella, one of the uh, more ruthless competitors. But then again, Elizabeth already has pro so showcased a ruthless streak herself. So it's going to be a really interesting matchup definitely to see which one of these women is going to be prevailing. Isabella for now in full control, setting, setting Elizabeth up in the corner of the Garcia sisters going up and locking up and just I I have no words I, I, don't, I don't know if that even did anything considering that the mask was uh, protecting her face but I suppose it was more, more about giving giving her the stink face than actually do, do, uh, doing any sort of damage there Elizabeth tagging in Yuri now the snow princess is back in action with a stomp and sharp kick and Yuri definitely showcasing her usual vigor, but looks like Isabella stealing control of the fight. Goes, throws a DDT and now tags in Gloria again. The Garcia sisters have definitely, they're definitely showcasing an improvement in their tag team dynamic to, tonight. Whether it's, the, whether it's the fact that they've been training more or may, maybe they are just that desperate to win here tonight. Well, I wouldn't say desperate, they haven't shown any kind of desperation, just full on desire and full on smart. They're, they're definitely showcasing a different type of strategy we're not used to. Yuri taking a bit of speed here, going for a beautiful step up in Seguri. Catching the leg now and going for a stomping right on it, another stomp. And locks up the other leg, going for the heel who try to dismantle both of the legs here. One after another, a twist, hardy twist there, and now going for another stomp. Just full on assault on the legs, and definitely a good, good idea to disable a high flyer's ability to go for the springboard maneuvers. Elizabeth now inside the ring, tossing, tossing Gloria into the corner, a shoulder thrust, another one, and that samurai plating is definitely going to be helping with that. Gloria able to get a kick reversal against the back leg. Setting, setting up Elizabeth stunt against the ropes, no, spring around, turn around, beautiful flip, escape, going for a beautiful spinning kick. Taking the opportunity and now tagging in her sister, it's Isabella's turn. And we're back to the more ruthless combination of the two tag teams. Pulling on the arm now, wrenching it really, trying to really break it with that swing around. That's gonna be twisting around more, more than more than is necessary. Katsuri trying trying to appeal, try to get the control of the match to her team, or at least to her side in here. Look at this going for a sit out match slam now. Drop down and now takes the opportunity to attack in Yuri. But Yuri now in a good position. Isabella is down while she's being picked up. 
by Yuri and sent into the corner. We could be getting to see the glitter blizzard. Possibly, maybe. On the top rope. No, she's gonna go for it. Yeah, she is. A top rope glitter blizzard. You beautiful execution. Hooks up the leg. Instead of keeping that small package going. Kicks out after a two count. Isabella still still not done yet. Missing with the double stomp. Yuri dot is rolling out of the way. Beautiful dots there. A uh, toe breaker drops down Isabella. Try to make her way to the to make the tag, but a hip drop puts a pause to any any kind of plan of that. Yuri now tag in Elizabeth again, who's not about it, uh, willing to go and uh, prepare to end this match right here. Lifting up, going for a karate chop and to the top of the head. That surely put the lights out in the Garcia household. We have one, we have two, and kicks out. Incredible. I, 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 I honestly don't believe it. How, how, did, how did she do that? How? Someone explained to me how. Catching the leg and turning things around quite literally with the dragon screw. Isabella now setting up. Trying to drag into the corner. Setting up in the corner now. Going for a kick but unfortunately gets countered. By Elizabeth with another sit out match slam. Hooks up the leg. Going for the keeping the shoulders down. We have two count. Isabella still in very treacherous position Ma successfully makes the tag gets countered with a sharp, sharp elbow Elizabeth now a devastating club to the back uh, to the back and a stiff elbow straight to the face taking the time to make a successful tag with Yuri now it's up to these two women now to bring this match to a conclusion I don't know if they, they'll be able to, well, we'll just have to see. Fireman's carry drop down straight onto the top rope. And now Yuri looking for a high risk maneuver here. Going for a frog splash from the top rope. Hooks up the leg. We have one. We have two count. And kicks out. Wait, what, 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 what? We had Katsuyori Elizabeth break, break the pin. Her very teammate came in to uh, uh, drop the pin. Beautiful jumping storm. Dropping down Gloria, hooks up the leg, we have one, we have two count, and we have a free, no, shoulder up, we have a shoulder up. Really kicks up with force out of that one. Gloria still holding on, and looks like Isabella is back on the apron, ready to assist her sister, however she can. Uh, but I I gotta question that, I gotta question that move there by Elizabeth. Why, why in the world would she come and break the pinfall attempt by Yuri? We have one count before Yuri kicks out. Looks like she's setting up, looks locking up the arm and the leg. We could be get, getting a submission hold here. Beautiful stretch right across and Isabella taking, making sure that Elizabeth does not come in to save. Yuri able to roll off and escape. But that was sure a strain on the back. Look at this, Hurricane Rana drops down Yuri. And now Gloria looking for a big move here, a big finishing maneuver here. Just ring at Yuri to get back up to her feet. She better watch out because here comes double axe handle misses. As Yuri was able to dodge out of the way. Incredible considering she had her back turned. Going for a now whipping Gloria into the corner. She should go for attack here real soon. She cannot hold out against Yuri at this rate. Dropkick fails to make any sort of meaningful impact. But that, but that punch definitely a beautiful super kick and Gloria now looking to end Yuri right here going for a kick misses entirely dodging out of the way head scissors locked in going for the whip and dropping down Gloria Gloria now making her way and Yuri just taunting not paying any attention whatsoever as Isabella is successfully tacked in there we have crucifix dropping down Yuri who's now trying to make her way to the corner but unfortunately gets the pinfall leg hooked up only a one count not not even in any sort of danger at this rate going for now stiff punches Isabella trying to soften up the head or try to go as a concussion it seems like or line up and make sure that Yuri cannot escape out of this one there we have a ripcord Spanish fly we have one we have a two count and Elizabeth once again breaks the pin this time for the right team though. Isabella picking, picking a fight against Elizabeth, getting a two count. Elizabeth stepping outside. Look at this. No. 
Salida del Sol fails as Yuri is able to drop her down with a slam. Yuri is sending Isabella into the corner. This could be the end. Sent into the opposite corner with a whip, and here she comes running in with the shoulder block clothesline. And here comes another big stomp. Hooks up the leg and going for the cover. Here comes Gloria saving her sister from pinfall. Not even one count. And a springboard maneuver taking down Gloria. Isabella is once again all on her own. But does Yuri have enough energy, enough gas left in her tank to take care of her? A beautiful drop there. Alley oop drop. Reversal. Pulling on the leg now, trying to soften her up. Try to dismantle the leg, ensure that she does not fall victim to the stomp as her sister did previously. Going for disrespectful stomps on the face and assault, uh, pulling on the arm now. Shoulder is gonna get dislocated. Kick to the head. As Yuri is trying to get the momentum back on her side. Catching hold and smashing the head right onto the turnbuckle. Once again, and no, gets countered. Able to escape from the corner, snapmare into a drop kick to the face. Isabella, I don't know, she's really trying to soften Yuri up here, but they look like whatever impact she's trying to deliver, she's unable to cause any meaningful damage here. Possibly a frog splash will be changing that. Here she comes with a splash, hooks up the leg, going for the cover. We have one, we have a two count. And we have a, no, Gloria Garcia this time breaking the pinfall. What is she thinking? I, I, I don't know, I don't know what, what either of the teams are thinking, but breaking up your team vo teammates' pinfall does not showcase a good attack team sportsmanship. A full-on fight has broken out on the ringside as Gloria is attacking Elizabeth and Yuri is still keeping up the fight with Isabella. We are getting a two count and Yuri is sent into the corner. It's full on chaos as every single member of this fight is ta taking, taking part in the fight, their respective fights. Yuri stunned against the barricade now and Isabella misses, uh, misses entirely, sent into the barricade. A hairpool match slam, we have a five count, we could end up in a disqualification at this rate. Up to a six count already, Yuri and Isabella, the two legal women still fighting on the ring side. Yuri takes the opportunity to step inside as Isabella is left outside. We have a seven count. Yuri rolls off and resets the count with that. Let's see for wh what Yuri is actually planning here. Surely she has a plan on either getting a disqualification going or no. Isabella able to escape and gets back inside the ring. She is not about to fall victim to whatever Yuri, Yuri was scheming. Making her back inside the ring now. The two definitely ready to finish this off. The question is which one of them will make the mistake of letting their guard down so far going counter to counter. Gets hauled and sent into the corner. No, escaping the corner successfully. Setting up and a heavy club to the back. Dropping Yuri down on her knees. And pulling on the arm again, really trying to break it off. Ooh, nasty, nasty twist there. Isabella making the tag to Gloria and Yuri makes makes the successful tag to Elizabeth. These two women already fighting on the ringside and here we have Salida del Sol dropping down Elizabeth. Hooks up the leg and Gloria going for the victory. We have one, we have two count, we have a three count. And Gloria secures the victory at long last. We a very simple Salida del Sol. Elizabeth definitely wasn't prepared for that. That came out of nowhere. I see the cameraman is definitely in a very good position. But do we even have cameraman in the audience? Talk up another victory for the Garcia sisters tonight. Once again, the season two tag team champions showcasing what it means to be a true a professional tag team.
getting up to the halfway point of the show tonight. We have the f fifth match coming up. Once again, it will be Tiger Taylor versus Sarah Bailey, one on one. I don't know about you folks, but she's ready for a fight. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making her way to the ring, accompanied by Spectacular, the Olympian, Strongman. Representing power and glory from parts unknown. The Warrior Princess, Tiger. Here, here, of course, the Amazon warrior, Tiger Taylor, once again about to showcase the entire world what she's made out of. Definitely try to make sure that she does not look like a fool. Of course, the joke is on her picking up these constant petty feuds with first Selena Bochamp and now with Sarah Bailey. They definitely do make you look like a fool. But at least you've been winning, winning, winning against one of your opponents, so... Maybe you, maybe at least you have so, some talent backing that up. All, all respect, whatever respect this competitor had for her fellow brawlers, it's all gone. It's all about getting a victory and nothing else. Definitely aiming to be the number one, no matter where, where or where she competes. Sarah Bailey always putting up her best effort, her best foot forward, and trying to secure a victory. And never give up. Give up attitude has definitely been risen up here. Thanks, thanks to this little feud that's been ongoing with Tiger Taylor. As I would, I would honestly, I would have already dropped out of the competition. Try, try to go. I find myself a natural opponent, but not Sarah. Sarah definitely tries to ensure that she's able to get the victory, the overall victory against Tiger Taylor. After all, it's, it's going to be a huge statement. The entire locker room. She is made of championship material, and she will do whatever it takes, no matter how many times tries it takes, to secure that victory. Bill has rang and so far starting off real, real, real nice and simple. No surprise attacks, no disrespect. We'll just two crawlers going full on at it. Of course, turning on the ringside of Tiger Taylor, there's also Particles who was. Uh, I was talking to him after the last Sunday's match, and he was absolutely appalled by by the by the choice made by Tiger Taylor to go on and attack Sarah Bailey even after the match has had ended. Apparently, he has given. Uh, given, had a conversation with Tiger Taylor to ensure that she would no, not do this kind of thing anymore but as we've seen Tiger Taylor already going back on her word assuring Particles that he would she would not be disrespectful towards Bailey well let's uh, let's see I suppose we'll have to wait and see and what comes around Tiger Taylor with her raw strength Fisherman suplex from the middle rope. Sarah Bailey kicking out after a one count. As it looks like, if, if you're paying attention to Bartacus right now, looks like he was more worried about Sarah there than Taylor. We have two counts, Sarah kicking out. And Taylor, Taylor already look re real devastated by that. Looks like she, she really thought she would have had it, but well then again, Sarah hasn't showcased mu much of much desire to fight back for some reason. So far, she's letting Tiger Taylor dictate the full facing of the fight. She she might be pay, pay, paying some something onto her, or maybe she's just given up 
another fisherman suplex from the middle rope dropping Sarah down rolling out of the way of the leg drop and looks like Sarah is finally no she's still holding up her guard a power slam and tossing the legs to side but following that a leg drop Devast devastating Sarah just keeps on eating attacks after another a dragon screw reversal there no, gets countered by Tiger Taylor again. Missing the leg drop. I suppose Sarah has had enough of those for one night. As she's before on e eating attacks. No, she's tr she was trying to go for a comeback. But unfortunately gets countered by Taylor. Gets lifted up and rolls around. Tiger suplex gets forfeited off. With a sharp elbow. Ba Sarah Bailey now with the... Dropping the arm and punishing the shoulder with chops. Going for a stiff kick now, gets countered. I don't. I. I. I got a question. This tactic here is by Sarah. She, for the m m most part of this, uh, the start after this match, she just full on eight, eight attacks, one, one after another. Did not fight back, and now she chooses to fight back. That that gives her a huge disadvantage. If she's trying to prove herself, then go for it. But I believe there are better ways to do that. You don't need to make yourself the underdog in such manner. That, that kind of a mentality is definitely going to be costing you the match. Your moves are going to be a, just that bit slower, a bit more sloppier, and allow your opponent to get full, uh, a get better hand on the situation. It's better to keep up with the momentum rather than to build it. Yeah, those leg drops are not, no longer connecting. A stiff punch there by Sarah. Kick, and no, gets countered. Dragon screw once more. Tiger Taylor stomps onto the arm and trying to set up, lifting up and a sharp elbow. She was not paying attention to Sarah there. Lifted up into a fireman's carry and dropped down with the snake eyes. Not done yet, it seems like as Bailey, Sarah Bailey, beautiful slam. Just raw monstrous strength there. Kicks out, Tiger Taylor kicking out at two, two and a half. Okay, getting up and going for a chop, gets countered by Taylor with her own chop, military press into a slam. Lifting up her opponent one more time and going for, try to set up this time successfully connecting the Tiger suplex. Rolls off and gets, hooks up the leg. Going for the cover, we have one, we have a two count and we have a three count. As, as stated, Tiger Taylor. Able to get an easy victory, Sarah Bailey just fell short. I, 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 I honestly don't I have nothing else to say about that. That match up. Sarah just full on. Let, let Taylor take control of the thing. Oh, come on! Once again, blatantly at exactly. No, this will not start. The referee coming in to break it off, but no, gets tossed aside. Taylor, once again. Just attacking Bailey. Disgusting. And not only disgusting, but completely unacceptable. Taylor Taylor will be getting a five-point penalty out of that. Completely mitigating uh, her victory tonight. This is not sportsmanship behavior at all. Coming up next, we have a fatal four-way elimination match between the four junior fighters, Gabe, Gabriel, Carlyarl, Kazarian, and Green Cyclone about to step inside the ring. Gabriel, it's Gabriel. I don't know what, what what's the association of making this man gay. Gabriel. I mean, he, he just likes to give, give, uh, take care of himself and uh, fashion himself. Sta uh, dress up in stylish clothes. 
make sure that everyone else is very stylish as well. To make this man, he bleeds fashion and charisma, and he just wants to entire world to do the same. But that's real disrespect. Real, real disrespectful to any any and other brawlers who happen to have their own style. But does Gabriel care? No, he does not. This is all but a fashion show, a fashion project for him. And he will punish anyone and everyone who happens to not show any sense of fashion. And his opponents, first, from Copenhagen, Denmark, weighing in at 271 pounds, Carl the King! And here comes the Danish Jarl, Carl the Jarl. A powerhouse, a very great, a very regal man. Man who definitely knows how to carry himself, and for a good reason, he's one of the greatest brawlers we've ever had. Currently taking part in the junior fighting division. For whatever reason, well, each which means that he got dropped out of the professional martial arts division. But that, that hasn't let him stop him or get, get him down. He's still, still full on in the competition. And they're here tonight to set to prove himself up against his opponents. Legendary hero Kazarian, the slayer of demons, collector of beads, and the grinder of flower. The man, man is absolutely multi, multi talented, having mastered many numbers of skills and having accomplished many great feats in his home realm. And he has also accomplished uh, so far a lot in the Pro Masters. He's definitely one of the Better junior fighters we have currently on the roster. And representing the Orient Express from the Shang Dynasty, weighing in at 156 pounds, Green Cyclone. Green Cycle coming in here and definitely real excited not only to be taking part in this matchup but also for the upcoming pay-per-view event the Elimination Chamber. This is exactly where he's hoped, hoped to be and he hopes to have a good match tonight it, just as a warm-up in case he happens to have a match in the pay-per-view event. We, we're not confirming anything as of yet. But Green Cyclone definitely looking forward, not, if not able to take part in the show, then at least to sh see what, what the match is all about, the matches are all about. Four brawlers enter the ring, but only one of them will be left standing. We're going real classic with the Brawlmasters Fatal 4-Way Elimination Rules here. As, uh, as per usual, eliminations happen either by pinfall or by submission. The last man standing in the ring will be declared the winner of the match. Pick, picking up their fighting pairs already, we have Gabriel going up against Kazarian. And Carl they are also showcasing a moonsault, uh, or uh, excuse me, a shooting star against the Green Cyclone who has managed to turn things around. Counters leg uh, the kick and sets up Carl the Jarl. Right, and as per, as per usual the elimination matches, it all comes down to who has the ability to outlast your op their opponent. It doesn't necessarily come down to who, who is the most prolific, who is able to get the most elimination or able to cause the most damage, but who has the endurance to outlast their opponents, or if not the endurance, but the uh, ability to outmaneuver them. This is all about la outlasting and not uh, getting a quick victory. So you gotta, gotta have the endurance to go, stay in the ring for a long time. Green Cyclone setting up for an arm breaker. 
And Gabriel, meanwhile, keeping Kasarian locked up in the corner. Green Cyclo going for the cover, I guess. Carl gets countered. Not get count gets countered, but gets kicked out after a long count. Re really, really early on, try, try to get eliminations going here. Look at this. Just dropping down his entire weight onto the face of Gabriel. Going for a chop, and Green Cyclo locked up with a running bulldog from the corner. A standing shooting star hooks up the leg again. Carl De Jarl, only a one count. Kazarian with an alley oop against Gabriel. Not done yet. Gonna go for a double leg drop and a green cyclone entirely missing. I believe it was just poor timing on that account. Kazarian hooking up the leg of Gabriel. Only a one count. These these brawlers are all all just trying to get quick eliminations going here. Okay, up the arm behind his head, but not sure what the hold is. And it's definitely not paying off as Green Cyclone able to escape. Setting up and goes for a very, very beautiful STO. Goes for a tie down combo. This is just classic Green Cyclone. High, high false activity. Boogie up the leg and going for the cover again. Carl the Arrow kicks out at two. It's so close, but it's still no, nowhere close enough for a full three count. Carl the Arrow. Kicking Cyclone straight to the torso. The midsection being softened up. Counter by Cyclone. Setting up. Look at this. A standing Spanish fly. Really impressive for, for him not only to do that, but to make Carl de Jarl fly, uh, uh, do the thing as well. Flip as like that. On the springboard now. Dodging out of the way. Carl de Jarl. Keeping up with the control of the fight. No, stand against the rope by Kasarian Smith's direct hit. And now Green Cyclone taking full advantage with sharp elbows. We want Gabriel and Kasarian going full at it against one another. The pulverizer failed to connect as Gabriel was able to dodge out of the way in a power bomb position, but Kasarian is able to escape from there. Lifting up Gabriel, and there it goes, the pulverizer gets countered, this time properly. A drop kick to the face, counter by Kazarian, but a chop, a stiff punch, and another chop, trying to chip away at the armor. Call the army while going for the cover, and Gabriel trying to finish off Kazarian. Just blatantly stealing the pulverizer, right from Kazarian, that, that was... Wow, I did not uh, consider Gabriel to go for that kind of a disrespect, but there he is. Going for a two count, but unable to get to secure the three count. St stealing your opponent's finishing move, that, that's just full on disrespect. Especially from someone who's quote unquote a style police. Sharp knee. And meanwhile, Green Cyclone going up against Carl uh, Young with the cover. Two count. Oh no, and Gabriel setting up with a Stars class into the pin, small packet style. We have two count and we're getting a three. Kasarian is the first person to get eliminated out of this match, leaving these three brawlers inside. And Gabriel for some reason attacking Green Cyclone instead of taking advantage of the fact that Carl Jarl is stunned in the corner. No, for some reason he has decided to pick a fight with the Green Cyclone, I suppose. To him, he's out of it. It's more atrocious. Well, Green Cyclone definitely not allowing that kind of disrespect to fly. He's trying to keep Gabriel stunned for as much as he can, but the momentary lapse in judgment allows Gabriel to escape. But for a strike and setting up against the ropes, changing targets now and sending Gaul onto the ropes. A beautiful kitchen sink. Oh, able to counter and get out of the way. Beautiful German suplex. Cover. Two. And no. Escapes. Barely escapes the three count there. Locked up. Regal cutter by Carl de Jarl. Definitely showing his uh, Jarl ancestry. Boogie up the leg and going for the cover. Shoulders down. No. Shoulder is up. Shoulder got up right before a three count. Waist lock complete into a power slam. Gabriel challenging Carl and here he comes. He shouldn't have done that. I definitely feel like so. Smashing the head right against the turnbuckle. A long clover, an utter one punches. Trapped in the corner and a beautiful hip toss right onto Green Cyclone. 
It's going to be killing over from that, no doubt about it. Locked up one more time with the recall cutter. Gabriel is down. And Cardial in a position to finish him off and get him out of this match. We have one. We have a two count. And we have a three. No, we don't have a three count. Gabriel able to escape from there. Look at this. No front light suplex. Dropping down. Green Cyclone. Stomp. Misses. Stomping on the canvas. That's not going to be good for the fools. Green Cyclone now setting up. Beautiful. Beautiful Cyclone the Tornado Bomb. Hooking up the leg. Carly Arl. This could be the end of the Jarl. We have one. We have two. We have a three. No shoulder up. These three. No matter how hard. How hard they're struck down. They still still on keep keep on going. A fa fa face busted straight under that torn buckle. Springboard moon salt. Hooks up the leg and continues there to try to get Gabriel out of this competition. No shoulder is up. I I what what is fueling this three? The victory at the end of the road. Well, definitely that. Otherwise, why would they still be fighting? Gabriel trying to turn things around, but unfortunately, Dragon Screw uh, or Lake Takeover turns things around. A standing shooting star, Green Cyclone, once again for the cover, really trying to do. And there goes Gabriel, leaving only Carl De Arl and Green Cyclone in the ring. Looks it up into a power bomb slam. Devastating force right onto the back there. Lifting up and no light suplex. Carl De Arl not done yet. Goes for a regular suplex. That surely must be it. Hooks up the leg and goes for the cover now. We have one, we have two count, and we have a three. Carl Leal with Northern Light suplex combo. Gets the victory. What a match. What a. What a all, all the. Well, all the brawlers definitely gave it their all. The three remaining ones more so than the fir first to fall out of the competition. But non nonetheless, at the end, it all has come to uh, come to an end eventually. And, and what I end it was. An interesting choice for a oh, for a replay here. I don't know what this is supposed to be displaying. Or it is. Uh, I, I have no idea. Just really draw out shots here. Here is your winner, Carl the King. Carl they are all once again proving himself to, to have the expertise, the talent, and the experience to uh, climb on top and stay right there. Next, we have the seventh match of the night. The two, two junior fighters, Wang Ling and Rachel Curtis, are set to go in one on one match. attitude and a desire to reach for the top. Here is a martial artist known as Wang Ling, a high-flying protege who try trying to make her career here in the Pro Masters. Uh, one of the more unfortunately unlucky ones as no matter how much he tries he do does seem to be suffering from a terrible case of bad luck whenever she's fighting. But maybe tonight we'll, we'll get to see her rise to the top. And overcome that weakness. And 
from Canada, Rachel Curtis. And the Royal Rumble winner of the women's match 2023 is Rachel Curtis. Here, definitely do see see improve herself once more up against a fellow junior fighter. It's gonna be a most 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 exciting match up. No doubt about it. But we'll see. It, it all could have been a fluke after all. Who, who knows? You never know. There goes the bell and here goes the match. We have Wang Ling and Rachel Curtis, two junior fighting competitors. Take, starting out in the ring right now. Uh, let's uh, let, let's see what kind of a match we're, we are going to be getting. I'm, I'm hoping a good one. Especially considering we have the Royal Rumble 2023 winner, Rachel Curtis, right now in the ring. And she's definitely starting out heavy. With heavy attacks, very heavy clubs. Just showcasing that raw strength of hers. And no, wasting no time whatsoever and locking up the single leg camel clutch already. Lang Ling able to escape from there and go for a double knee face breaker. Springboard acts a moonsault. There she goes. Successfully goes for the moonsault and now hooks up the leg. Only a one count though. Go for another springboard. Top rope unfortunately misses. She was playing with fire and unfortunately it got not pay off this time around. Powder by Rachel and beautiful clothesline. Dropping down Ling, going for the no wing, try to a running close line, dropping down Rachel. Sitting Rachel into the corner now. Sitting up chop right across the chest. Locking up the wrist lock and chop. And here she goes. Look at this. Athletic is a beautiful athletic talent there. Definitely more refined moves than we're we're used to seeing from Wang Ling. But the match is still young and it could go either way. Able to go for a counter and drop down Rachel going up, trying to set her up in the corner with stunning chops. Rachel able to escape, misses with the clothesline, I don't know how she did that, she clearly hit her, but it had no impact whatsoever on Ling. Good for a kick and setting up, Quite bad core position, no, beautiful escape, Wang Ling picking on her feet as she uh, is able to escape. The Canadian backbreaker without any problem whatsoever. That was, that was absolutely quick thinking on her, her feet. A knee lift to the face and a face crusher now. Planting the face right onto the canvas. Another double knee face breaker. She's really right prioritize the head there. A double leg drop now. Solid, solid technique there. Lifting up. Rachel back up to her feet and a beautiful, very beautiful super kick. You could hear the impact, and that was not right in the kisser. I mean, it was right in the kisser. That was not uh, a pleasant. That's what it feels to be at the receiving end of one of those. Especially from someone who uh, uh, just full on prioritizes her leg strength. A full on drop kick now. Sitting up on the apron and trying to line up. You're in a poor position, Ling. I would. Get a bit closer, but no, here she comes and entirely misses. Even I could tell that that was not going to be connecting to anything. Tried to set Rachel up, but she just drops her down with a leg sweep. With her stomp onto the arm, and we could see yet, yes, once again, the single leg camel clutch. Surely this won't win the match, but it's a certain, certain way to cause some damage or try to worry your opponent down. Snapmare. A rolling snap there into a basement drop kick. Lifting up and no leg gets caught. Rachel dropping down. Ling on the top rope. Rachel Curtis. She's not actually gonna jump. That's gonna be a heavy impact. It can't be cross body impact in, in fact. Lifting up Ling once again and now sending her into the corner. What is, what is the plan here? Lifted up onto the top turnbuckle. Lines up the legs. What is he thinking? Oh no. Don't tell me she's gonna go for a superplex. No, yes, no, a top rope brain buster. 
incredible strength. We have one, we have two count, shoulder up. Wang Ling coming to right before a free count. Lift, being lifted up, back up to her feet, going for a kick. And one more time with the Canadian backbreaker. No, one more time with the reversal. Wang Ling not allowing Rachel to get that hold. Since then, from there a splash. Beautiful flight there. If only she could do that with her finishing. Oh no, she's actually going to try it again. Well, let's see. This time in a better angle. There she goes. Springboard float over neck breaker. Beautiful execution at long last. Wang Ling has succeeded. Wang Ling got the victory with that. There she goes. That finally, at long last, she has succeeded hitting her finishing maneuver. And with that, secures a victory against the Royal Rumble winner. Uh, that was abso absolutely astonishing display. Uh, at long last, uh, hard work is paying off. And here's Rachel. Looks like she's going to be offering a hand. Set. Be beautiful. Beautiful showcase of sportsmanship here. This is what it's all about, and I'm glad to see. Real, real great to see. But even though she end up falling short tonight, she is able to recognize talent and the determination of Wang Ling. She has earned her victory tonight, folks. No doubt about that. Moving on to the 8th match of the night, we have Tag Team Maxon continuing. Melissa McDonald and Alexia Dregadotti teaming up to take on the Natural Disasters. And here comes a woman with a style, with the art history, with the body, body management and the athleticism. That leaves everyone to escaping the flight. And looks like Captain Cooper has decided to join this the following match up. contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, accompanied by the Captain Cooper from Cape Town, South Africa. Melissa McDonald! That'll be a really interesting choice. I would have figured that Captain Cooper would, uh, would be coming to get her with Alexia, but instead he, here he is already entering with Melissa McDonald. Melissa, of course, just full of fun, full of energy, ready to display her abilities, her talent inside the ring yet again. I tried possibly getting another contortionist brawler in the ring as she's been training to weaponize her body more and more. Like, look at this. Not many can perform that. Or just full on wood, but to bend their bodies like that. But she has the elasticity to do just that. Limber enough to stretch her body in unimaginable ways with like a second coming of Magic Maggie here it seems here, here comes one of the greatest powerhouses in the women division overall, definitely one of the more impressive brothers overall. A professional martial artist. We have Alexia Dregarov there. And her partner from Reykjavik, Iceland. Alexia the Savage Redhead. The adventurous wild spirit combined. A small, a small figure, but with incredible strength. Alexia Regatov there, time and time again, astonishing the crowd with, with her, just her strength. How she's able to uh, perform such feats of high power, no one knows. The 
here comes a lot of travel. Mad Dog Whitney and Riley the Nightmare, accompanied by the third member of the Natural Disasters, Queen Bee here. Whitney and Riley take it, about to take this fight to the next level, as they usually do. The uh, animalistic team definitely is ready to let, cut loose and let wild. The bell has rung and we start off this tag team match. Starting in the ring, we have Melissa McDonald and Matt Doc Whitney to start us off. And already Whitney setting up. Melissa up against the ropes, setting up, lining up, dropping her down onto the top rope. Turning on the ringside on either side, on either teams, we have Captain Cooper here to scope out Alexia Regadot there first and foremost. but. Also, probably pay, paying attention to any of the other brawlers, what they're doing. Be, 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 paying close attention to the natural disasters as of now, and also Melissa. I know the team of natural disasters, Queen B, the third member of the team, is also supporting on the sidelines. Melissa looking up the head of Riley the Nightmare goes for a beautiful DDT. Just a full, full launch there. Looks like Cooper so far more, more interested in ensuring that his outfit is in tip-top shape instead of paying attention to the match. Beautiful escape there by Melissa with the snapmare setting up Riley. Speed up and goes for the drop kick to the face. And that's a lot of face to be drop kicking on, on the top row. But Riley trying to make her way to her partner makes the tag. Whitney is back inside the ring. Misses with a kick. I, I, I don't think, even though Melissa was dodging out of the way, I don't think it would have connected if she, even if she hadn't uh, dodged out of the way. Catching hold of Whitney and now trying to track her into the friendly corner. Locked in there, but escaping whatever plans there, there were coming. I don't know what was Melissa thinking there, but a super kick straight to the back of the head did not help with that. Go for a jab and a slap. Another snap just full on disrespectful against Melissa tonight. A backbreaker. Now mounting and going for punching straight against the face. Ooh, a stomp. Stomp to finish that off right to the midsection. Lifting Melissa back up to her feet and going for a slap. Another one counter. No, bl lung floor. The crowd is not enjoying this one beat. I don't know what they have against Whitney right now, but. So far, she's in full dictation, full, fully controlling the mass here. Dodging out of the way. But Melissa once again caught. No, the elbows, the elbows able to create the separation she needs. Getting hold of Whitney and locks her up, locks the head up in a suplex. Not done yet, she's gonna keep the hold going. We have two suplexes. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we have entered Suplex City. Melissa now with that is able to make the successful tag and tag in Alexia Regado, they're one of the greatest powerhouses back from season two. Lifting up and brought down with a, uh, back, a back suplex drop. Heavy punches straight to the mouth or straight to the tongue it seemed like. And locks up the head, going for the neck crank. Trying to twist it as much as he's able to, but Whitney takes the opportunity to get back up to her feet. Raw strength against a wild dog. What's what's gonna be winning here? Looks like we have a running bulldog incoming. How how iconic from the mad dog. She's not done yet. She's about to finish this. Finish Alexia off. No, gets countered. Gets the kick caught, and Alexia now locks her up with a waist lock takedown, power slam, power bomb style. 
Lifting up Whitney again, back up to her feet. Katzinger sending her into the corner. In a poor position as Alexia sets her up. Shoulder thrust, another one trapped in the corner. No way out of this one. Well, no way out of that. A stiff kick. We had sure. I don't know where she was kicking with that. Another waist lock power bomb. No, not a power bomb. But gut buster. Oh, definitely blow, blow the air right out of you. Melissa tacked in, and so is Riley. We're back to the original pair that started this fight off. Riley sending Melissa into the corner. Melissa counters, escaping successfully. A kick and now a face buster. Sit out face buster. And a jumping double stomp right under the mid midsection. Tacking in Alexia now. About, and here we go. We have a very classic pair of brawlers right now. Alexia and Riley have fought many times to get her. So let's see if whether or not Riley will be able to use that knowledge to her advantage. It's a backbreaker. And now she's going to be tacking in Mad Dog Whitney instead. It's mounting her and no, gets countered. Punches now straight to the face. Hooks up and Alexia hoping to get a victory here. We have a one, we have a two, we have a rope break. The referee, referee calling it off. Whitney cleverly, that's that's just ring IQ, using your ring IQ right there. Gotta, gotta say, I'm, I'm impressed that a mat dog would, would be half the ring sense to know where the rope is. Going for a hold now, but choking using the top rope. Well, that's that's just the other, one other way to take advantage of the rope there. Going for a stiff punch. And now lines up. No, gets countered by Alexia. Dragi dragging her, trying to set her up. One more time in the friendly corner. No, the elbow counters and escapes the corner. Headlock locked in. A classic move by Mad Dog Whitney. Just full on squeeze. No, no end in sight. Stomp right onto the arm and there we go. The camel clutch has been locked in. Hoping to earn a miss a victory here. No, gets it picked off. Third off, escapes and brought down. Rain must have been absolutely tremendous for Alexia to run out of that hold so quickly. Catching hold on now, sending sending Whitney into the corner. Let's see what the move is going to be because corner is up, lifted up in the top turnbuckle. Saving across and setting up. Don't damn me, she's going to actually go for it from the top rope. A superplex. Not done yet, she's not done yet. Keeping the headlock locked in into our inverted cross, hooks up the leg, we have one, we have two count, and we have a three count. Alexia Dregadotir picks off the victory. But Riley did not, did not respond in time to go and save her partner. She, she for the fought, she for sure fought that Whitney would be getting out of that on her own, but that lapse in judgment allowed Alexia to secure the victory. Beautiful end to the match, and definitely once again, Alexia just full on showcasing that strength she has inside her. It's been a real long time since we had a superplex, but a superplex comboing a suplex that's just next level. Just ignoring the pain that comes along the way and just pushing through. That's exactly the Savage Red Head style. With that, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the main event of tonight. Participating in tonight, we have the All-Star Brawlers, Butcher Pedro and Henry Louis Marceau. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the main event is about to kick off right here. The last fight before the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view event. Let's, let's see what the All-Star Brawlers have in store for us tonight. And here comes the, the first contender. Super Pedro definitely, definitely has been beating as of late. I, I got a chance to talk to him on the back stage and he, has, he said he has been beating left out of the competition so far. He, he right up 
came and demanded a match from me tonight, and uh, considering that he, he, had a, he hasn't had a match in a long time, I, I agree to it, and honestly, I want to see what the man has, mass, man has in store for us. So far, keeping on with the jolly Italian guy. But the game is getting real old real quick, so... Let's see if he's gonna be spicing it up tonight. And his opponent, accompanied by Selena Bochamp from Paris, France. Weighing in at 206 pounds, Henry Louis Marshall. Can you imagine better support than to have the women's professional martial arts champion on your side? Yes, I honestly couldn't. Entering the ring is the phenomenal player now. Henry Louis Marceau and Selena Bochamp. These two old friends brawlers definitely have made the show, the show their own. And just time and time again continue to wow us. With whatever talent they are uh, they have. The style, the technique, the holds. They're, they're every single time they're they're just able to catch the, their opponents off guard. That's exactly what makes them the phenomenal flair. And with that, we get on with the main event of tonight. Butcher Pedro and Henry Louis Marceau. Two all-star brawlers fighting it out tonight for your enjoyment. And we know that about it in a warm-up effort to see what, what comes next Saturday. Or this Saturday, rather, in the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view event. Henry already starting out heavy and strong. Uh, but Boots and Pedro dodging out of the way gets countered. Henry full-on dictating and in full control of the match. Whatever, whatever Boots and Pedro was hoping to accomplish here, he's completely left in the shadow of Henry as he locks up the sharpshooter. Locked up in a submission hole, trying to the referee ask is it, is it Petro gonna be giving up already? But no, Petro is able to fight off Henry there. Petro definitely needs to ooh and heavy head butt there. Yeah, Petro definitely needs to come up with a way to get an attack going here because I, unless he's able to, he's gonna be falling real short real quick. We already saw this kind of technique being used earlier tonight, and it did not pay pay out any dividends. Henry for the first cover of the fight, but only getting a two count. He needs to keep on going, and he definitely is gonna keep keep on going. Here we here we have the French kiss, and just very sensually goes for the cover. We have one, we have a two count, and we have a shoulder up. Pedro coming to right before a three count. Try it now. Henry trying to track. Petro out of the ropes, and there we go, the leg, leg drop, beautiful dancing leg drop. Just full on disco style warrior, hooks up the leg and shoulder up. I I would have thought that would have been already it. Pedro just full on having fallen short, there's no, I don't, this isn't a competition anymore. And this hasn't even been a competition to begin with. Henry has just been, uh, essentially Pedro has just been a punching bag for Henry. I, I, I don't know whether or not that was the plan here, but oh, maybe this was the plan. The vice grip, the elevated vice grip, lifted up in the meat hook hold. No, the ice grip, able to force the separation there. As Henry still on full control of the match, sending Pedro all the way to the outside, leaving the ring. And here comes Henry as well. The two about to continue their fight on the ring side, locked up in the heel hook. Yes, nasty torque on right onto the ankle. Just getting away and rolling off and Pedro now try to get hold. Look at this military press into a gut buster. Here we have getting back inside the ring. Pedro just challenging Henry in the wrong way. And it gets out of the ring and the turnbuckle there take a bit of roll off damage, I suppose. From behind a backbreaker. And now punching, clubbing. Clubbing forearms straight to the face. Henry should have been keeping more attention to the match instead of trying trying to get the crowd on his side. He tried already fully on fully on his side, although so far he's been in full control of the match. We're getting into a four count. This could end in a disqualification at this rate. Lifted up by Henry into 
a, a, a scoop slam. We're in at a six count is good and in a very well in this qualification arm puller. We have seven count. Henry being lifted up by Pedro. Locked up and brought down with a slam. Beautiful, beautiful throw there. We have an eight count at our hands. Don't tell me this is gonna end up in the disqualification. Pedro is just standing there. Pedro rushes in and Henry left outside. Put her Pedro tried to go and escaped the uh, escaped to the outside again, but unfortunately the time ran out. The referee called it off right before Pedro was able to get outside. Uh, well, I suppose that's one way to end a match. E even though it's a disqualification victory. Uh, uh, that, 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 wow. A cheap victory. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a, just a cheap victory. Uh, it is what it is, but I, I'm just gonna come out and say that was a definitely a cheap victory and what a cheap ending uh, to the main event as well as the show tonight. Just standing there and fighting their time. Pedro fully knew what he was doing. And I don't know what Henry was doing. Did he decide not to fight anymore? I, I, I don't, I'm not sure if he, whether or not he can actually feel happy about this victory. It, most, it just looked like Henry was, just did not want to fight anymore. Just fully on giving up the match. Well, whatever the case may be, that, that, that is the end of the show tonight. And, and uh, yeah. Remember to do it on Saturday. And I want to reiterate, on Saturday, not on Sunday, but on Saturday, 7 p.m. UTC, we will be starting off the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view event. A full card of 14 matches featuring two Elimination Chambers, one for the men and one for the women. And the winners will be headlining Brawl Mania at the end of April. And with that, I've been your host, Kupa de Quarta, and I wish all of you a very good night.